In OpenRPG, we had a small problem. We might have any number of assets on a character in the animation of a battler, and we need to know what the size of the character is, and we need to set it quickly or to make it easy for people to create new characters of different sizes and tell Godot what the size is. So for that, we have this rect extents node. And in this video, we're going to see how we created that a plugin for the editor that allows us to quickly resize that rectangle extents and to place it on the canvas interactively instead of having to use the values in the inspector. This is part of our plugin tutorial series with PigDev. I invite you to go see his introduction to the API because I'm not going to cover that. I'm not going to cover the very basics, but I will run you through the code in this video and give you an overview of the rect extents, how it works, and how we could create a plugin just for that. Let's start with the rect extents node. If I open the scene, you will see that it's a node 2D with a script attached to it. It's a node 2D, so we get access to the canvas item class. This is the simplest node that has this canvas item properties. And canvas item allows us to draw inside the canvas like that. So that is how we draw the rectangle, the purple one that we that we see here. And as the plugin is activated, as long as rect extent has been the last selected node, you will see the handles in the viewport. But if I select something else in OpenRPG, you will only see the extents around the character. So let's go look at the rect extents code. I'm going to expand the script editor. This node represents a rectangle some properties that allow us to define the bounds of a character. We define that mostly with the node's size here and its position at the moment. Every time you change the size, it's using a setter. It's going to recalculate the rectangle, the bounds for this node, and to update the drawing. So when you call update in a node 2D or a canvas item derived node, Godot will automatically call this underscore draw virtual function. In this case, we draw the rectangle on the node. The node also has a has point method, which uses the node as a rectangle too, and it returns has point from that rectangle to class. So we use that when, for example, the player taps on the screen, touches a battler, and it is this function that determines if you touch a battler and so you want to attack it or you want to target it. So knowing that we want to work mostly with the size of that node, we can now go look at the plugin. So again, in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of the code in the add-ons folder, rectexsense gizmo, so let's expand that, and the plugin's code is in plugin.gd. Now, this one has already quite a bit of code. I think it's over 100 lines, so 130 lines, because it has undo and redo support, and it has some drawing. So that's not the simplest plugin you will make, but we're going to look at the broad outline for the plugin, and in the next few videos, we'll go step-by-step step through the drawing code, adding the functionality, the interaction, the calculations, and then we will look at the undo and redo part and the input. I'm going to fold all the methods so that we can look at the big picture now. As every add-on in Godot, this one extends editor plugin, which allows us to manipulate the editor as Henry K showed you. As far as the properties are concerned, we have a few variables that are going to store the state of the plugin at the moment. So the rect extents is going to be the last selected rect extents node, the one that you want to edit in the editor. Uh, in Godot, you can see a very light outline, you know, that goes past the name of the node and goes to the left of the icon. And this one corresponds to the edited node, the active selected node, the one that will show the properties in the inspector. And so with the edit method in the editor plugin class, you can get that node and you can check if this is the node that you want to edit. Unfold this method, we assign this object, this edited object to the rect extents variable. Now in this method, you can check that this edited object is a rect extent. So in Godot 3.1, you could use object as rect extents. I've registered the class in the Godot editor. Or you could use a condition instead and check that the edited object, the object parameter that we get is a rect extents. If it's not, 
you return from the function or you set rect extends to null. But in that case, I just get the object and I use the handles method. So there are a few methods that you use here. Edit, make visible, handles, forward canvas draw and forward canvas GUI input. These four come from the editor plugin. There are methods that you can override in your plugin to get certain functionality. So edit will give you the edited object, the one that was selected last, that was clicked on last in the node tree. Then make visible allows you to customize what happens when you toggle the visibility of an object in the editor. So handles is absolutely required if you want to use forward canvas draw. These virtual methods allow you to draw an overlay on top of the canvas. So that's what we use to draw the four handles that we use to control the size of the rect extent. And this is a Boolean function. So you can return if you are in the right context to draw over the canvas, or if it's not the right object that's selected, you return false. And that's what we are doing. We make sure that the object is rect extent. So that's why right now in the edit method, we store the object in rect extent. But again, we could do it like that store as rect extents, which will give us null is if the object is not the right type. And then you can return uh, that rect extents is not equal to null. For example, you could do it this way. Next up, the drawing code and the calculations related to that happen in that fourth method, forward canvas draw over viewport. So as the name suggests, this allows you to draw an overlay, that's the, this parameter here, over the viewport. So the overlay is a control that takes the viewport, the center of the screen here, and you can use all the canvas item methods, but not only you could append maybe nodes to that, to draw things on the screen. So you can make a small UI maybe that floats in the viewport. I haven't tested that, but it should be possible as this is a regular control node. If I expand the function, this one is a little complex. So we calculate the extents of the rectangle and the position of the four anchors, the four corner points on that rectangle. From there, in the second block, I use the transform matrices to get the right position in the viewport because as you can zoom in and out on the canvas in Godot, it's not enough to just assign a position like you would on a 2D node. When you make a 2D game and you place nodes in the viewport, Godot makes the calculations in the background to place the object at the right position and at the right scale based on the zoom level that you have with your camera. But in the plugin, you have to calculate this yourself. So this is explained in the official tutorial in the manual, what the calculations are, and we will look at that in the next few tutorials. But this second block of code does calculate the right position on the viewport depending on you know whether it's like that, like you can see in the editor, or it's uh, squashed with the dockers on the side, or if you zoom in and out, you can see that the handles are always at the right position. And their size, however, does not change. They always scale to adapt to the current zoom level and to always take the same number of pixels on the screen. So this code partly does that. We calculate some center and some rectangle for the anchor so that we have the data required to then draw it as two circles, one that's red and a smaller one that is white so that we get that stroke, that effect on the screen. So this is drawn in the draw anchor method that we call for each of the anchors. This one takes the anchor and this overlay that we pass from our draw virtual method that we get from the editor and we use overlay dot and the draw methods from canvas item. So draw circle in that case to first draw the stroke and then draw the circle inside of it. Let us now look at the final two methods um, which are related to input. So drag to is used by this forward canvas GUI input method. And if I expand it, this one, as you'd expect, handles the input. So don't be too scared by the amount of code here. Uh, a lot of the code is this undo thing. 
So uh, to do undo and redo, you have to manually tell Godot, I want to store the value on this property, this property, that property. And then you have to say, uh, when the user is done moving a handle, I want to store the value right now. And the difference is what will undo or redo. So you have to save that in the history. We mostly have three or four big conditionals here. The first one, checking if the user presses the left mouse button and if the mouse button is pressed down or is pressed up. And we store the anchor the user clicks on. If they click on one anchor, we start the undo redo, we start the drag. Then as long as you are holding the mouse and moving it around the screen, on every tick, we redraw the four anchors and we change the size of the rectangle. This is done in the drag to method that you can find above. And when you lift the mouse, so for that we check that there is an anchor that is being dragged now and that the click is not pressed, so it means you are releasing the mouse cursor. Then we commit the change, we um, add a do property, that is to say we register in the editor's history that you want to commit that change, that change in size. And we set the dragged anchor to nothing to say that we are done dragging the anchor and you can restart the loop next time you're going to click on an anchor in the plugin. There's one last small block here in case you press escape while you are dragging. So I'm going to do that now. If I press escape, the plugin goes back to the center. At the moment, it does not redraw until you move the canvas around or do some other manipulation but you can use that to cancel the current operation. So for the time being, this node and this functionality is not available in the editor by default. So that's why we added it as a custom node in OpenRPG. I've really made this plugin to experiment with Godot's editor plugins and also to create tutorials for you and to show you how to create tools to interact with the canvas. If you want to create tools for the OpenRPG, the repository is in the description. You can join us on Discord. You can learn a lot doing that and working together. We can create great open source tools that would be, if you can think of something, please open an issue on the repository. In the next few tutorials, we will look at the code in a more step-by-step -step fashion to make it easier for you to get into the plugin and see how everything works in details. But that said, I want to thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.